The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Welcome back to theCUBE's day one coverage of HPE Discover 2022, live from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We've got a couple of guests here with us next. Going to be talking about industry transformation. Please welcome Brad Schleckenhoff, Director of Global Industry and Sustainability Marketing, and Andy Hochhalter, Senior Director of Worldwide Industry Sales Programs, guys from HPE. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thank you for having Glad us. Glad to be here. Industry transformation, that's a big term. It's not a new concept, but we see so much going on. Andy, talk to you about industry transformation from your perspective. Where are customers, how are they capitalizing to really make data a true currency? Right, well, underlying all this is, is the data that is becoming so complex. But at the same time, there's specialization required in each industry with the different applications that the industries are running and our ability to bring that forward and connect all those things is a big trend going on. And as we see that developing over time, um, we're getting more, um, connecting those different applications that are running is becoming more, uh, every day, we're doing more of that. More and more. So, uh, where do you want to start? What's your favorite industry to, to transform? <laughs> uh, I mean, financial services is, you know, it's got the, right. the whole blockchain thing going on, <laughs> uh, Industry 4.0 and yeah. manufacturing. You know, retail. Everybody has a, you know an Amazon war yeah. room. Yeah. You know, energy now with EVs and and, yeah. and solar and everything else, and the price of oil, and and now you throw in inf inflation and supply chain, and you. I mean, it's yeah. just every industry is getting disrupted. I, I want to make an observation. You guys tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, think about the, the incumbent industries. They they generally have data at the outskirts. It's all siloed, and they're trying to put it at the core. And that's a big challenge for them. What are you guys seeing in terms of who is having success with that? Do you have examples? What role do you play? Yeah. Yeah. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me, I'll jump in here. Um, I mean, I think one of the unique ideas is all those inter industries you mentioned there are all trying to learn from each other, right? If you're a financial institution, you want to understand what retail is doing because you want to serve your customers better, right? You want to look at you know, some of these technologies, how they're being applied. Um, you look about like sustainability. The industries are trying to learn how to do that better from each other. So there's th this notion of industry transformation is it's kind of twofold. It's one, how are these industries almost like entering new markets? I mean, you look at, at all the tech, tech companies out there, they're all getting in, into payments, for example, right? You know, Google Pay, Apple, totally. Apple Pay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just like a, one example of where you're seeing kind of that that blurring of lines between industries happening. Content, uh, yeah. Amazon getting into grocery, and so, and, yeah. and, and the premise is that data is the enabler. I mean, right for decades, we've seen a, a, a stack, a vertical stack within an industry where, yeah. where whether it's you know, research and development, manufacturing, sales, and distribution, marketing, it, you were in that industry stuck for life, and right. now all of a sudden, data allows you to traverse industries. Yeah. This dual disruption agenda that you mentioned. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really at its core is because these companies have the ability to take advantage of that data even more, and they're trying to serve their customers even better, that that's kind of opening up these new doors for them to, to do that, because that's, you know, and again, there's so many good examples out there. Uh, automobile manufacturing are looking towards the gaming industry, you know, to how do they design <laughs> controls, you know, that right. kind of stuff is, a, you know, as an example. So you see, you know, all kinds of that. You mentioned also that, you know, everybody's trying to bring the data to the core. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think you heard earlier today in the keynote, you know, that, that companies want to be able to, to take advantage of the data, data wherever it is. Um, if it's at the edge, in a factory floor, if it's in a, you know, it's patient data sitting somewhere, you want to, you know, handle it where it is and you, it, there's a cost to doing that to bring it all together. Yeah, so by the way, yeah. I want to clarify because yeah. you're absolutely right. The data by its very nature is distributed. Sure. When I say core, I mean put it at the core of their business. Sure, words, yes. That's yes. what I mean by, enough. Yeah. by data first. But your point is really, we're going to talk about yeah, that yeah. because it brings, gonna... brings so many other challenges with how you deal with that, but please yeah. jump in, Lisa. Yeah. I was just going to ask you, Brad, you talk about the blurred lines between industries, yeah. and talk to us about how is HPE a facilitator of those industries learning from each other? You have such breadth in so many different industries, as Dave mentioned, but how are you that enabler, if you will, of allowing them to, to be able to have data be that key? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it just comes through the experience of working with these customers um, you know, in these various industries, and then I mean, there's so many times where Customers come to us, they want us brief, and again, they want to learn from these other industries. So we're an aggregator of that technology. We obviously 
un understand the technology with cloud or you know edge or you know anything we're doing in, with data. We, you know, so we're using those you know those lessons and just applying those out there um, you know to those industries. So it's I think it's just us as an aggregator. You, you, yeah. you, how, how's the customer experience changing? Any we heard from Home Depot this morning they were focused on the customer experience and and their associate experience. Right. Yeah. Bringing those together maybe. You well, you that. know what we also heard this morning is the different personas right that are out there and being uh, that are looking to transform their business yeah. and each of those personas is still l linked together by the data but they want to use it in different ways with different applications and the ability to connect all those things again they're learning from each industry so what Home Depot learns about their mobile apps may be something that we can deploy in uh, manufacturing um, as far as locating things on the floor and connecting the edge data in bring it in to and then use that to analyze use AI models to do predictive behavior, uh, preventative maintenance, all these things are similar uses of connecting the data, but then applying to the specific industry use case. Yeah. And that pivot of that horizontal use of the data into those specific demands by uh, uh, the personas within the, the the different industries is what we're we're focused yeah, on. Yeah, and the technology is like an accelerant, you know. Here, so you're thinking about like something like 5G, right? 5G is going to accelerate, you know, a lot of transformation in various industries um, throughout that. I mean, uh, at tech, you know, the technology alone is not really what the the, the customer cares about. They, they care about what do I do with that? What kind of outcome can I get? Right. I want to ask you, Andy, about the customer conversations. You talked about the personas. We've been talking about data democratization for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a challenging thing to do. But how are you seeing customer conversations change and evolve, especially over the last couple of years, where every LOB has to have access to data and be a driver of its value? Right. Well, the customer, you know, historically, HPE's background is in infrastructure, and we've served industries in the data center for a legacy, right? Mm -hmm. But now they're saying it's more, you know, I've got to talk to uh, more people in my business as a data center owner. I've got to serve these folks, understand their business. And as a supplier to me, you need to understand them as well. And sometimes help me with that conversation and help me see the things to make those connections that I may not know as a data, uh, it, you know, as, a, as an IT professional. Um, and how do we challenge the business to think about different ways of doing things in the industry? So how do we, we think about, um, you know, bringing those connections from other industries in and, and uh, uncovering uh, opportunities or problems, anticipating problems in those deployments that they may not have seen by their staying in their swim lane. You know, I'm, I'm torn on this topic because on the one hand, I think about the, the big data era and, in, and in, I know of a lot of failures to, mm -hmm. to return you know, the expectations. And it wasn't a fail fast, it took a decade you know, to get there. And part yeah. of the failure domain was, to your earlier point, Brad, everything was sort of shoved into this centralized location. Yeah. You have this hyper-specialized data team and everybody has to go through them. But organizations, I think, are now realizing, like your thoughts on this, that data has to go out to the lines of business, it has to be contextualized. People are now talking about mm -hmm. building data products and monetizing data, and yeah. that's really, to me, what digital transformation is about. So, mm -hmm. But generally speaking, most companies are not great at data. They have a lot of data. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of data lying around, insights, I think we heard in the morning keynote, are scarce. Right. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. what's your vision for how this evolves? Yeah, I think I think you know from the data perspective that again the the at the core is how do I serve my customer better, right? So it, you know whether that is actual you know customer data that you want to serve up personalized offers for, or you know make decisions of you know medical decisions for their you know for their you know better patient outcomes. So if they keep that in mind, then you know as, as far as how it's used by the different lines of business there. You know that's where we can help facilitate. You know, in many ways, and that's where you know cloud becomes a you know a really key technology. Um, you know, having that flexibility to to move it around as needed, create the you know um, deliver the workload where the customer needs it. That you know that sort of idea is is where we're we're going with this. I yeah. think. I'd, I'd like to give you an example. Um, Please. In the FSI industry, uh, out here on the floor, we've got a demo on payment systems, right? And we've been doing that uh, with our nonstop uh, product and supporting that uh, in the in the banking industry for ten years or more. And it's evolved over time to be one of the you know. Uh, 
it's ubiquitous across the in the support. Yep. Um, but now we're talking about new regulations with all the global events that are going on. You know, crazy stuff that it, more pressure on the banks to to comply with that. Um, worries about money laundering and fraud prevention. Well, connecting those the data from those payment systems into the AI modeling that is now being deployed to do more sophisticated fraud detection and mon money laundering detection and uh, all of those kinds of things. How you connect those together is an example of what we're seeing, how we get more insights by, uh, by the combination that we can bring together. And the insights is critical, yes. right? I mean, mm -hmm. without it, the data isn't very useful. Right. right, right, and I think even you know these these concepts like swarm learning, right, where you're actually trying to aggregate a lot of those, you know, a lot of that data and and provide you know even a broader data set to to learn from is even you know more beneficial. Right. I think the when you think about the the principles of this this decentralized world, that's that it starts yep. with an organization saying, look, we recognize that we can't shove it all into a data warehouse or a data hub or a single mm -hmm. data lake. Yeah, we're going to have all of those. And those are just kind of nodes in the mesh, if yeah. I could steal a Jamak Dagani term. <laughs> and, 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 and increasingly, data as product that can be monetized, we're hearing a lot more about this. And those are organizational yeah. considerations. I mean, HPE can maybe facilitate that through whiteboard sessions, but, but the, that leads to, in order to, to democratize data, I need self-service infrastructure, mm -hmm. and I need data that can be shared and governed. I, I don't know about the last one, but you definitely are in number three. Self-service infrastructure, simplification, yeah. your version of mm -hmm. cloud. Yeah. How, how do you see that, uh, your, your role in that little vision that I just laid out? Do you buy that? You want to take that? Or? Well, yeah. I, I think that we have, um, we definitely, because we, we see the data in all these different places, and we're, we're trying to be agnostic to um, you know, where it comes from, uh, who owns it, it's how do you get it together and make it useful. And you don't have to capture it, you don't have to own it, but you may own some of it, you may borrow some of it, you may rent some of it, you may buy it, and you may bring it together and you'll use it for the purpose and then move on to expand to, into new things that you learn from that you may then monetize um, in all those different ways. So we have a role of making that platform in a way that you can see it in different ways and use it consistently and repetitively and gain more value of it, and then apply your applications and you know all those other things that you do. But that that bring it together agnostically is a big part of our offering. And for, am I am I not correct? I mean, my thinking on HPE's okay. value is providing that infrastructure uh, to be able to do just Ag just that. That's right. your swim lane, if you will. And it is, but we're being asked to move up the stack and provide not only the infrastructure, now the platform, the ability to uh, offer that platform uh, in our HPE GreenLake offering, where we're, we now can you know, have cloud-like services on-prem, it doesn't oh. really matter where the data sits, um, and then plug in the applications and even manage those applications for the customers. Okay, so I, I, mean, I see you as IaaS yep. and PaaS, which yep. is that up the stack, yeah. the ability to, okay, I want whatever, Python or OpenShift, and I want to build applications now on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, the management piece is something I, I excluded um, because it, uh, an organization may say, hey, we need help yeah. managing this stuff. Right. But I see that, that IaaS and PaaS as infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You're not getting into applications where you're no. getting, you're not. No, a, other than letting, letting customers actually build on top of that, right? right. There's a lot of customers. You're an enabler. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You look at some of the things we're doing with, you know, with our Esmeral platform and things like right. that, you know, we're providing that development platform in a, in a really streamlined way of, of you know, pushing you know, right. applications out. I mean, little known fact, right, is that most banks right now are hiring more developers right now than, than finance people. So all these, all these industries are becoming tech companies. And that's, you know, that's the whole launch of the FinTech industry many years ago, and it's you know, continuing to evolve. And they want to bring AI, they want to bring data right. into their applications, yeah. and you, HPE, I see as an enabler of that. Absolutely, um, yeah. Absolutely. Agreed. Give us, last question as sure. we wrap up here, give us yeah. the vision, like the next five years, what are some of the industry transformation elements you're forecasting if you have a crystal ball? Yeah, 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 I think number one, just an increased focus on personalization and customization. Uh, you know, you look at you know personalized offers. When you add location-based services, things like that, combined 5G and you know, like all these technologies, you're seeing a lot of that custom manufacturing. 
So those kind of trends are going to continue. We know that's you know those are the workloads that we got to you know know no is coming you know down the pike and, and, and address those. Um, secondly, I think AI right AI is going to is going to be you know it's going to impact every industry in a big big way. You know when like Andy talked right. about you know fraud detection, uh, you know manufacturing robotics, those kind of things. Uh, and then I think, um, you know, lastly, just, just this more convergence, you know, of these industries, right? You know, tech is just, you know, impacting everything in such a big way, and so you're going to see right. more of that, that blurring of lines between, between the industries yeah. as they jump, into, jump out of their normal swim lanes, right? Right. Be between mach machine learning and AI, we're yeah. going to see efficiencies by doing things better with less uh, deviations yeah. and driving uh, lower cost, and we're going to see new capabilities come to the forefront. And that's going to be consistent across all industries, and it's going to be based on the data. The, both of those require the models, you know, the data to go in and, and drive their models. Do you think any industry is more ripe for disruption? I mean, time frame wise, you got healthcare, you know, like I always yeah. wonder, you know, uh, how is AI going to help doctors make better diagnoses? Already is. Yeah. Will, will AI make the diagnoses? Yeah. You know, retail, I mentioned before, you know, energy, you know, government yeah. <laughs> is changing, uh, enter entertainment, media yeah. and entertainment. Is, uh, do you see any industry patterns where one is being disrupted when, more than the other? When we talk to customers, <laughs> every industry thinks their industry is not going fast enough. And so it's right. like, you know, it, I think everybody is just so hyper-focused on, you know, what they are involved in and then their domain that uh, y yeah, you, you, depending on who you talk to, yeah, I, you don't, everybody needs to do it faster, you know, more economically um, and more efficiently. Right. And so I and, think- And they're all being disrupted now too. It's not only have to do it faster, but they've got to um, transform to keep yeah. up with the demands of their customers. Nobody's safe. Yeah, and the technology is just, just going to continue to accelerate that, and that's the thing. And and, and the market's becoming you know less forgiving as as we go. So people have to react really really fast in these markets, you know, and especially with all the other changes going on around us, uh, to to actually you know make that impact. I'm liking what's in this crystal ball. I'm going to have to ask you guys for some consult after we wrap here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining Dave and me, talking about industry transformation. Tremendous amount of of transformation so far, and so much to go. It's exciting to watch. Yeah, appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having us today. We appreciate, appreciate it. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs>